What one weird trick does a profession actually hate? If people knew how often I google their id questions, I'd be out of half a job. I work as an internet sales specialist for a chain of car dealerships, and if the average person knew how easy it is to get the cheapest possible price on a new car, I wouldn't have a job. Literally all you have to do is start a bidding war between two dealerships, submit inquiries online to both of them, and explicitly tell them that you're shopping. Anytime one of them comes at you with a deal, just present that number to the other one. They're going to keep trying to beat each other until they financially can't anymore. And that's when you have your cheapest price. The real kicker to this is that dealers trade vehicles between them all the time. And the market isn't as saturated in new cars as you may think. If you're looking for something very specific, and not super common, there's a very good chance that they're trying to sell you the same car. Ordering glasses from Zenny Optical Online for $12 instead of paying $250. Yes, that price of $12 includes frames and lenses. Extreme couponing really does work. A lady came through my line today, and had a preliminary total of $168.59. After I ran a handful of coupons, she got out of there with a total of minus 0.16. That blew my effing mind. Even though it was in my line, I could only smile and laugh at it. I wasn't even that excited when I used to watch that show on TLC back in 2008. We paid her to take merchandise off of our hands. My CSM didn't know what to do, so had to get up the ASM to my line. After he verified I did everything correctly, he opened up the till, and said give the lady $0.16. What? What kind of coupon? Rather than saying free, says the store will give you money to take? My sister used to do that stuff. She had spreadsheets and notebooks and sh- It got to the point that the assistant manager would temporarily open a line for her to check out so she didn't clog up another line for 10 minutes. She bought a lot of things she didn't need because she needed them for another coupon to work. Frequently this would be shampoo and body wash. Since she didn't need it she'd give it to me. I would just stick it in my closet to forget about it. One time I took stock. I had something like 15 bottles of Old Spice. 20 bottles of Irish Spring, and another 20 bottles of assorted brands. I ended up keeping 5 or 6 bottles for myself and taking the rest to a homeless shelter. Cause who needs that much body wash? Hobos. That's who. I'm an ERRN. This is one trick many people use to get into a room ahead of other people. Tell them you have chest pain going down your left arm. We take that seriously and we'll bring you right back. The reason we hate this is more than the fact you are a douche that just cut the 95 year old lady waiting for 4 hours with back pain. It's because you are going to get rushed in. Have a CBC, BMP, troponin, EKG, IV, chest x-ray and IV. And when the doctor comes in and wants to talk about your chest pain that now has mysteriously disappeared, they will be confused as to why you now are concerned about the fact it burns when you pee after hooking up with that chick at a club the other night. This requires an entirely different set of tests than what we have just done. You are an a-hole. You will be ignored. We hate you. We will make fun of your burning D. You will receive no creature comforts while there. You will not have your call light answered. We have ways of torturing those that knowingly do not follow the rules. A hole. Eating less and regular exercise is enough to lose weight in most cases. You don't even have to exercise, even though it doesn't hurt. Of course, if you eat less calories than you use, you lose weight. If you only eat junk food until you reach that limit however, it's not very healthy. At gas stations, at least in my state, they have to turn on the air for you to inflate your tires if you ask. No need to put quarters in the machine. The gas station attendants always make a sour face when I ask. So I assume they hate it. Wahaha <laughs> free compressed air. Airlines don't want you to know this rule. US. Based travelers can cancel or change their flights for free within 24 hours of booking. I used to work at Arby's so the secret trick there is to not eat at Arby's. Gift cards don't expire in the state of California. If a gift card has a monetary value, i.e. a $50 Amazon gift card, then it legally can't expire. If it says that it has expired when you try to use it contact the retailer directly and inform them that you live in California, they will issue a replacement. 
it's almost invariably thinking you can do away with an entire profession by using one weird trick. As a former web designer, for me it's thinking your nephew who knows about computers and has done his own web page is a viable alternative to professional web developer for your company website. But you said you like the dancing skeleton and flame gifs. The 1040 EZIRS form. Tens of millions of Americans can use it. It takes about 5 minutes to fill out and it's no harder than completing a library card application. The H&R Block. Jackson Hewitt, etc. Mass market tax services would prefer that you be, a, terrified of tax filing and believe it can only be done properly for you by paid professionals, and, b, deluded into thinking an airplane load of money is going to drop on your house that only those professionals can find. Neither is the case. For most people there is no secret path to a giant surprise windfall refund. And if you get a huge refund you have screwed up your withholding rate and should stop lending the government so much money interest free in the course of the tax year. If you have a simple picture, like most people, file your form yourself. And if you are among the minority with a complicated tax picture, the last place you should go for help is a storefront operation in a mini mall. Get a reputable private CPA. Complaining at a restaurant to get free food. Go F yourself, repeatedly, if you have nothing at hand, feel free to borrow my biggest knife. The electric company does actually hate a lot of the one weird tricks because a lot of those weird tricks can actually cause what we refer to as one weird death when someone gets electrocuted by some Ahat's electrical nightmare, bullsh capacitor scheme, or is running an autocode, grid tied electrical science project and back feeding what should be a dead circuit, or hooks a generator up backwards though a 240 volt outlet after a storm to power the house and doesn't open the main breaker first, it works. But it could also kill someone if not done right. Edit. I have to say this. Don't try any home science projects on your electrical system. Get a licensed trained electrician. Preferably one with good references. To do any electrical work. Many wiring schemes will work for years until they don't and then they cause instant death or a fire. Recently had to replace a ceiling fan. The contractor was horrified to see what was going on above it. I could tell he really didn't want to have to put a new one up there. But was also scared to tell me that. I was perfectly happy to just install a simple dome light instead. I will take not burning my house down over a fancy fan any day. Used to work for the city. My job was to keep the libraries and public buildings lawns clean and well trimmed. There's this one weird trick where instead of bagging up my grass clippings, I'd blow them into the street so that it was no longer under my job description to clean it up. My foreman hated that one. Yelling am I being detained. Repeatedly to police officer will get you off any crime. Electrical engineer here. Fixing fuses by putting a coin or a bit of wire in there. That's a big dangerous stupid no no. Friend of mine once phoned me up asking if I could have a look at her vacuum cleaner that had blown up. The thing had a cord about 4 feet long from where she'd repeatedly stripped it back and put the plug back on don't ask me why and it also had bare wires going into the plug. The bare wires had touched and luckily one of them had simply come loose. Why luckily? Well, I opened the plug up, and there was a fuse, wrapped in tin foil. That's how you fix fuses, isn't it? She explained, shocked. I said where else have you done this, and sure enough, most of her appliances had been fixed the same way, including the TV in her daughter's room. I nearly flipped out, then took her to the DIY store across the street literally and bought her a bunch of fuses. Good god that was worrying, especially since she's also the most accident prone person I've ever met. Police officers hate it when you say no comment and wait for your lawyer. There are so many completely legal tactics and tricks the police can employ to get you to confess There are also so many unpredictable implications of answering even the most innocent questions. If you are arrested just remember, the police are not your friend and they do not have your interests in mind. Do not say anything to any of them, not the arresting officer, not the guy behind the desk, not the guy who brings you food, no one. There's a reason why your right to remain silent is specifically stated. Because it's one of the most important rights you have. Use it. Oddly enough, you do have to say one thing. I am invoking my right to remain silent. Or some variant thereof. It's not enough to simply remain silent. You have to acknowledge the right and that you're taking advantage of it. 
Ask your hospital if they have a prepaid discount for most of their procedures. We did not have maternity insurance when my wife got pregnant with both our kids. I went to the billing office six months before she was due in the nicest hospital in our town. When I asked how much labor and delivery was, I was quoted in excess of 12k. I simply asked if there was a discount if I paid in advance. I was quoted $2,900. I made payments for 6 months, about 500 slash month, and walked into the hospital on the day she went into labor, delivered, stayed for 2 days, standard, and walked out, never received a bill, repeated the process 2 years later for our second child I think the bill was $3,100 that time, I was positive I would receive another bill, but we never have. Most disposal problems can be fixed with a few turns of an allen wrench on the underside of the disposal. It manually fixes jams. Most people seem to not know this and call plumbers instead. Recently when mine stopped working I discovered the reset button on the bottom as well. Saved me a lot of money and time. The 7.3 liter turbo diesel is one of the finest engines in the world. But it has a huge flaw in the design of the wiring harness that communicates electrically with the injectors under the intake valve cover. This harness works itself loose over time and eventually will present all sorts of issues in your truck. Check engine light, stuttering and shaking at particular throttle positions, injector missing etc. Well if you take a US quarter coin and use an angle grinder to cut the quarter down to the right size you can wedge it into the wiring harness connector forcing it to stay connected tightly for pretty much ever. This is known as the 0.50 cent fix because you have to do it on both sides of the engine. If you're a student, read the syllabus. A host of information is in there, and it is the binding document between you and your school about grades and other policies. Accountant here, and I used to work for an accountant that specialized in tax work, filing personal income taxes for clients. These accountants hate it when people are smart enough to do their own taxes. But here's the thing. Filing taxes is easy. In most cases, your taxes are extremely easy to file. Take your tax slips, enter those numbers into a free tax program, and file it. In some cases, it only took about 10-15 minutes to complete a client's file, and we charge them a few hundred bucks. Want to avoid paying so much money for an accountant to file your taxes? The one weird trick is to get off your A and punch in your tax info yourself. You literally just look at your pieces of paper and type it in. Not sure if it's one trick, but here goes. I was seeing a chiropractic doctor 3-4 times a week to adjust and pop my back, then lie down on a weird massage chair with electric nodes on my back and shoulders with the voodoo promise that I would feel better. I was strictly forbidden to do any exercise. I was 22, pretty skinny, never had any back or neck injuries. There was no history, my back just sort of hurt when I tried to sleep, so. Of course, f that guy, I went to the gym, and through bad form, kept hurting or pinching my back and shoulders, twisted my legs knees, but eventually got the form down and started working on my back, deads, squat, etc, I'm 27 now and haven't had any issue sleeping or any need to go visit that back cracking practitioner, so, I guess, tldr strengthening your back at the gym is the worst thing you can do to a chiropractor's bottom line. Knowing that many so-called locksmiths are the drill and replace type, they know nothing about actual lock picking and will just bust out the drill, drill the lock, and overcharge you for a cheap replacement lock. I worked for a national unlocking company for a few years, and we action did it all, picking, drilling, rekeying, and replacement. In many cases though, drilling is a quicker option, especially if you cancel a new lock. I just utilized these services the other day when I locked myself out. One thing that concerned me was that no ID was asked for at all. Dude just showed up, broke me into my house, got paid and left. 